In this video, we're going to look at some basic algebraic proof at GCSE level. If you're looking for something more advanced, for example, proof by induction, please check out my site up here. The first thing that we're going to do is look at the difference between demonstrating or showing that and a proof. If we were asked to show that adding two odd numbers gives us an even number, we could simply say now uh, 3 plus 3 is equal to 6, 9 plus 9 is equal to 18. These are both odd numbers, adding them together gives us an even number. This is an example of being asked to show that. And this just holds true for the values that we've done. And we've shown a couple of demonstrations, so we might be asked to demonstrate. This isn't, though, a proof. The difference between showing that or demonstrating and a proof is that a proof will hold true for all values. When we start a proof, we generally call the number n. Okay, so a number could be called n. So that number might be even or it might be odd. It might be 5, it might be 10, it might be 100, it might be 3. We don't yet know. To ensure this number is even, all we do is multiply it by 2. So 2n has got to be even. Just think about that logically. 2 lots of any number, 2 lots of 3 is 6. 2 lots of 10 is going to be 20. These are all even numbers. Therefore, if we wanted an odd number, we could either write 2n plus 1, or 2n minus 1. And these are going to be odd numbers. Okay, So what we've got is any number, n. We've got even numbers, 2n. And we've got odd numbers as either 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1. If we were asked for consecutive numbers, we could say that those are going to be n. Then n plus 1, n plus 2, and so on. And in the same way, we could say n minus 1. Okay, So let's take n to be 5. 5 plus 1 is 6, 5 plus 2 is 7, 5 minus 1 is 4. If we were asked now for consecutive even numbers, we could write 2n, we could write 2n plus 2, 2n plus 4, and so on. 2n minus 2 if we wished. Consecutive odd numbers, we could write 2n plus 1, 2n plus 3, 2n plus 5, and so on, or 2n minus 1. So let's just think, if n is 1, that's 2. 2 lots of 1 plus 2 is 4. 2 lots of 1 plus 4 is 6. So if n was 1, that would be 2, 4, and 6. If n was 1 in this case, that would be 3, 5, and 7. So what we're going to do is look at some specific examples of this. My approach isn't universal. You don't have to use it. You can use your own approach. And a basic conclusion at the end is always going to ensure that you're awarded the marks. So let's start off. We need to prove that half the sum of four consecutive numbers is odd. So let's look at four consecutive numbers. Now logic tells us if we're summing these, we're going to add n plus n plus 1, and then we're going to have plus n plus 2. Now at this stage, we need another one, which could be n plus 3. My preferred choice, and this isn't essential, is to write this as n minus 1. So I've got n minus 1 plus n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2. So let's take n to be 5. That's 4, that's 6, and that's 7. Now, what we want to do is add these together. n plus n plus n plus n is going to give me 4n. The reason I've chosen the minus 1 and the plus 1 is when we add them, they'll disappear. And all I'm left with now is the plus 2. We want half of this, so what we can state now is 1 half of this is going to give us 2n plus 1. And therefore, what we can say, therefore, 2n plus 1 is an odd number. So it is an odd number. And that has shown that that is true. So let's look at the words. Prove half the sum. So we're adding four consecutive numbers back to back. n, n plus 1, n plus 2, n plus 3, or n minus 1. And then we're looking for odd. That's an odd number. So we just show this in our working. And this would be perfectly fine. So nice and straightforward. Prove that the sum of any three consecutive numbers is a multiple of three. Now, when we're looking for multiples, as long as we can factor a three out, so we can have three and then something stuck in the brackets, or three lots of something, we can say it's a multiple of three. So put anything you want in there and it's a multiple of three. So if we can factor three out or express it as three n, then it's going to be a multiple of three. So let's look at the words sum of any three consecutive numbers. So let's take n, then what we're going to have then it's the sum, so we add in plus n plus 1. Now, again, at this stage, you could go n plus 2. 
My preferred choice though is n minus one. Okay, so what we got is n minus one plus n plus n plus one. So we got three n, and then what we're going to have now is the minus one and plus one are going to cancel. So what we can state then is three n is a multiple of three. So multiple of three. Quite clearly, that's a multiple of three. So let's think about that reasonably, fairly straightforward. The other approach is to write it as n plus n plus 1 plus n plus uh, 2. So if we added this up, n plus n plus n is 3n, plus 1 plus 2 is going to give us 3. We can factor 3 out, and that's going to give us n plus 1. So what we can now state is, therefore, this is a multiple of 3. So 3 lots of n plus 1 is a multiple of 3. So as long as you can bring that 3 out front, we're sorted. So again, a fairly straightforward little bit of proof. OK, what have we got now? Prove that if the difference of two numbers is 4, then the difference of their squares is a multiple of 8. So we've cranked the pace up a little bit here. But let's just think about two numbers who have a difference of 4. So what I could do is have n plus 4 and n. OK, so n plus 4 and then n. The difference between those is going to be 4. The reason I've written it this way is just looking at the question. It's going to be helpful if we consider now um, ensuring that we have positive numbers. We can do it lots of different ways, but on the face of it, this is going to be more beneficial. So say I took n to be equal to 3, then this is going to be 7. So we can see the difference of them is going to be 4. So what we're now asked to do is if the difference of two numbers is 4, then the difference of their squares is a multiple of 8. So we want their squares. So they have their squares, and the difference means we're subtracting. So what I'm going to do from this is expand this out. Expanding this out is n squared plus 8n plus 16 minus n squared. The n squared is going to cancel. 8n plus 16. Now, what we can do is factor an 8 out of this to leave us n plus 2. Therefore, 8 n plus 2 is a multiple, so multiple, uh, multiples, multiple of 8. And that would be a perfectly fine proof. You could have gone the other way, you could have said n squared minus n plus 4 all squared, or you could have gone n minus 4. It's entirely up to you. You take your pick, as you'll see, it will come up with different ways. I try and avoid too many negatives in terms of what I'm going to end up when I factor, hence why I went that way. If you want to do n and n minus 4, that would also give quite a nice bit of factoring. But just be careful that anything from here, you'll still be able to factor it, and that will give us our answer.